We have seen in the previous videos how to test the difference of means between two samples, but we can also test whether the variability or the variance between two samples are actually identical. So here's where the F test comes in. If you regularly go to the grocery store, you might have noticed that you can get different brands of the same product. For example, you can get different types of soups from Campbell's, from Knorr, or from the store brand name. We could ask ourselves whether the variability in salt content is the same from brand A to brand B. Here are some salt contents for some soups for two distinct brands, Campbell's and Complements, which is IGA's store brand. The table shows us that the mean salt content in Campbell's soup is higher than the complements, which in itself is interesting. But the table shows us also that the values vary for both brands, and our question is, is the variance the same for both brands? You won't be surprised to hear that to answer this question, we must go through the seven-step procedure, so here we go. Step one is to choose the test. We have a qualitative independent variable, the brands of the soups, with two values, Campbell's and complements, and a quantitative dependent variable, the salt content. We must make sure the samples are normally distributed, which we will take for granted. Since we are looking not to check if the means are different, but rather if the variability is different in the two samples, we will use the F-test. Before moving on to the second step, let me introduce the F-statistic and the F-sampling distribution. F is calculated using this formula, where you divide a variance of one sample by the variance of the other sample. When you're doing a right tail test and a two tail test, you must put your highest variance as the numerator and the lowest variance as the denominator. I'll come back at the end of the video for the left tailed test. Our F statistic has two degrees of freedom. Basically, our degrees of freedom are the ends of individual samples minus one. So you'll have a degree of freedom for the numerator, which is the degree of freedom for the sample with the highest variance, and you'll have a degree of freedom for the denominator, which is a degree of freedom for the sample with the lowest variance. Here is the sampling distribution for the F. Now, just like the chi-square, it is skewed to the right, or positively skewed, and it also begins at zero. There, it is impossible to get a negative value of F. If you remember how to calculate variances, you always square. When you square, you cannot get negative results. As such, F, because it's one value divided by another, and both of them are positive, all F values will be positive. Now we can determine our statistical hypotheses. We can have a two-tailed test for which we will have these statistical hypotheses. We can also have a right-tailed test for which we will have these statistical hypotheses. We can also have a left-tailed test for which we'll have these hypotheses. We'll come back to the left-tailed test at the end of the video. Now, our question asks us if the variances were simply different, so we will choose these statistical hypotheses. As usual, because nothing else was stated, our level of significance will be 0 0.05. In order to identify our critical values, we must go into the F tables. But the F tables are slightly different from the ones we've had before. There is one table for every level of significance. It's important to note that the level of significance for the table refers to the area for a one-tailed test. So if you're doing a two-tailed test, you must use the table for your level of significance divided by two. Here is the F table for a level of significance of 0.05. Just like the chi-square and the t-test tables, our critical F values are found within the red rectangle. Each one of these values is associated to a specific combination of degrees of freedom. We have on top the degrees of freedom of our numerator. Remember that the numerator is the highest of the two variances we have. And on the left, the degrees of freedom of our denominator. If your actual degree of freedom does not appear in the table, pick the closest value you see. 
For example, if you have a degree of freedom of 37, 37 is not in the table. So you have a choice between 30 and 40. Choose the closest, which would be 40. Now let's find the critical value for our test. Remember that we are doing a two-tailed test with a level of significance of 0.05. Remember also that the tables give us the values for one-tailed tests, so the appropriate table to use is the table for alpha divided by 2. So 0.05 divided by 2 gives us 0.025. Both of their samples have an N of 10, so both of her degrees of freedom will be 9. Be careful, though, if your Ns are not identical. So our critical F value is a 4.03. It's now time to calculate our F value. The equation is one variance divided by another, so we can develop this as so. We've already been through the method for calculating variances, so here are the variances for salt contents for both soups. We get F by dividing, but remember that it is not the lowest divided by the highest. We divide the highest by the lowest, which in this case will give us an F value of 1.65. We can now declare whether or not we reject our null hypothesis. Because our calculated value is lower than our critical value, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Which means that we cannot say that the salt content varies more in one of the brands of soups. The procedure when performing a left-tailed test has a little bit of a twist. First, when calculating the F value, you must take the lowest variance as your numerator and your highest variance as your denominator. This is reflected also when you're finding the critical value, when you're performing a left-tailed test. Now, your degrees of freedom are also reflected, so at first in the numerator, it's the degree of freedom for the sample with lowest variance, and the degree of freedom for your denominator is the sample with the highest variance. Once you've found the value into the table, you must do what is called reciprocating it. It's not complicated. Say, for example, you found a value of 4.68. To reciprocate, you take 1 and you divide it by the value. So 1 divided by 4.68 would give you eventually a critical value of 0 0.21. Now it's your turn. At a 0.05 significance level, answer these two questions. Is the variability in temperatures A significantly lower for 2012 or B significantly different between both years? The answer for A is that the calculated value is of 0.85 and B the calculated value is of 1.17. I'll be looking to see all of your steps before the beginning of the next class.